In this extract, Scrooge is horrified at the apathy and disrespect of Mrs Dilber and old Joe. Scrooge listened to this dialogue in horror, and as they sat grouped about their spoil, in the scanty light afforded by the old man's lamp, he viewed them with a dis detestation and disgust which could hardly have been greater, though they demons marketing the corpse itself. Ha <laughs> ha, laughed the same woman, when old Joe producing a flannel bag with money in it, holding out their several gains upon the ground. This is the end of it, you see. He frightened everyone away from him when he was alive, to profit us when he was dead. Ha ha ha! Spirit, said Scrooge, shuddering from head to foot. I see, I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Merciful heaven! What is this? He recoiled in terror, for the scene had changed and now he almost touched a bed. A bare, uncurtained bed on which, beneath a ragged sheet, there lay a something covered up, which, though it was dumb, announced itself in awful language. The room was very dark, too dark to be observed with any accuracy, though Scrooge glanced round it in obedience to a secret impulse, anxious to know what kind of room it was. A pale light rising in the outer air fell straight upon the bed, and on it, plundered and bereft, unwatched, unwept, uncared for, was the body of this man. Scrooge glanced towards the phantom. Its steady hand was pointed to the head. The cover was so carelessly adjusted that the slightest raising of it, the motion of a finger upon Scrooge's part would have disclosed the face. He thought of it, felt how easy it would be to do, and longed to do it, but had no more power to withdraw the veil than to dismiss the spectre at his side. 